What's up everybody welcome back to another Logic Pro X tutorial. I am Clormo and today I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth about the file tempo editor which in turn goes a little bit more in depth into smart tempo settings and I also want to do an aside in the smart tempo itself and some of the global settings in there that deal with flex mode because I think there has been some either miscommunication or I have seen some videos out there that kind of explain some of those stuff and people don't exactly I don't feel like they're explaining that correctly. Maybe I'm giving it a different interpretation. But anyway, I want to try to keep this short because there's a lot of info and a lot of back and forth and demonstrations. So let's go into Logic Pro X. I just have a file here with an audio track. And just to recap what Smart Tempo does, I'm going to do an adapt here because what I'm bringing in is a drum break and I want to adapt the project tempo to that. So let's bring this guy. And I'm going to turn cycling on, make that a little bit less. So I adapted the tempo, I did the, the analysis, and it's 118.5. Then I'm going to change the key because I want to keep my project tempo at that. I want to lock it down. And where's the file tempo editor? So first, you got to double click. And if you brought something into Logic Pro X using the smart tempo, then you will see all of this down here, which is the file tempo editor, because it did the analysis already using the smart tempo. You're going to see that as I bring other things that I won't be using the adapt function, the smart tempo, then I'll have to press the analysis button here to do the analysis. But anyway, just to give you an overview of the, what the file tempo has, you have all this information here about the region itself that you brought. So you have where it's at right now. You have its tempo. You can double the tempo. You can half time the tempo. And what that's going to do is just this. It's going to add uh, more beats in between your downbeat. So essentially it's going to do like a flex editing kind of analysis and add more transients. You can also have do half of that. It's going to show the signature, which is in this case correct as well. It's a 4-4 signature. And then you're going to have here some zooming options. You have your, your actual region display down here. And each of the prominent orange lines are downbeats and everything in between are beats. So those two things, it's important that what you're dealing with, your sample material that you're bringing in and all that, that you kind of know if that is correct. If you don't know and you just want to trust logic, then that's good. But it's it also involves a little bit, even if it's just minute, right, that you make sure that the analysis that logic is doing is correct. And then after that, you also have this volume control here that's going to control the volume in relation between the odd region and the metronome. You can also turn cycling. I'm going to turn on the metronome. And so you can listen to the metronome as you go to the left more. You can listen more to the file as you go to the right. Some people don't like that. I think it's, it's perfect because it will give you a uh, room to actually listen to the metronome in relation to the auto region. I don't know. That's just me. But the bigger portion here, the, the main event here is this actions panel. And I did a video response in my in, in, on Friday showing some of this before. But this is what we want to dive into with the file tempo editor because it really controls everything else and helps you with mixes and with sample material, making sure that things are aligned on beat and all that good stuff. And these three are the main options that, that I want to concentrate on. But we have other options here that are a little bit more related to the functionality of the command. And they are, you know, you can revert your changes, you can scroll in play, and you can do other stuff. But we're going to kind of concentrate here because this is what actually does the, the work. So with that out of the way, now I'm making sure that I, my project tempo is kept at 118.5. So I'm going to start bringing some stuff. First, I'm going to bring two guitar loops. One, both are close to the tempo, but one is a little bit higher than in a lot of one is a little bit lower by about three bits per minute. So I'm going to bring first the one that's above our project tempo. And there it is. I already have the tempo information in there and it did the analysis because I have already practiced this or done this before with this file. So it did that. But if I 
I undo that and I bring the file from another copy that hasn't been uh, edited yet. There it is. And when I double click it, I am not going to see that tempo information from the file tempo editor. So I got to analyze that first. And it's at 125, which is what the file has already. Great. And I want to match that to my to my original file down here. Let's just preview what this is. Just a guitar loop. And that does match. My down beats are correct. My beats are correct. So what I do is I select the region and I say, okay, I want to match that to my drums. I want to do a DAB region tempo to project tempo and a line down beat. Boom. There it is. Simple as that. And now when I go up here on the project itself, let's listen to that. So everything's aligned, uh, aligned to the tempo of the project. Downbeats are aligned. Now let's bring one that's just a tad below the project tempo. And I have to also analyze that. And as you can see, the region is a little bit short of the four bars. I'm going to analyze that. It's 120. That matches up. I'm going to do the same thing. Boom. Now that's it. That's there. Now let's listen to that in relation to the drums. And I don't want to destroy your ears. Great. So now Last but not least, let's bring something a little bit different. Let's bring something that's even farther below the tempo, but also not in the correct signature as far as how many beats it goes. Let's just bring this here. This is a trumpet. I'm going to analyze it. And there's a few things. So the first thing is that this downbeat should actually be here, and then this beat should be actually here, but it's a trumpet solo that spans one bar so the humanity behind it is correct right because it won't match a perfect tempo when you're playing it live so that's good but just for the purposes of demonstrating it here we'll have to do some fine tuning here already well let's do our typical action boom there it is it matches it to two bars because that's the length of the audio but in reality this here it's only uh, a little bit off, right? And it's just one bar. So what, I'm, what do we want to do? We want to then adjust this a little bit. And let's preview that. So it's kind of in sync with the tempo, but you know, let's just move this downbeat there. And you see that's going to match here the region. And then I don't really have to move this beat but um but i will i'll just move it around a little bit so that matches a little bit more with the tempo and now let's listen to that in relation right in the project so obviously it's speeded up because it's at 90 beats per minute and that's one of the things that I wanted to emphasize also in this video. You you can do all this stuff, but make sure that or understand that this type of edits are going to throw off a little bit what you have in terms of the auto region and it's going to speed up or make it uh, slow down in relation to that. So don't be surprised if you don't get exactly what you want and this sounds kind of weird, but that's what you have. And in summary, what this does is just replace the flex editing that we had in the past where you could do enable flex and you had all your transients and then you started moving things around, which is still available. It's still there, but that kind of gave a lot, a little bit of destructive kind of editing and introduced artifacts. I don't know exactly what they did here with the algorithm that does this. I haven't read too much into it, but this, in my opinion, is much better than the flex and gives cleaner results. I haven't noticed any artifacts in this example. I don't think 
you have either and i haven't noticed any artifacts either in other uh, projects that i have done or the tryouts so that's pretty much it for the file tempo editor which is pretty nice but i wanted to also do just something quick here the this command here the adapt project tempo on all regions to region tempo and downbeat it's kind of misleading i don't use it but i just wanted to tell you exactly what i did what that's going to do for example if i prick this region here it's just going to adapt the project tempo to the um the tempo of this region then it's going to align this region to the downbeat and then all other regions that are in the project are going to be aligned to downbeat it's not going to adapt any of these especially if you just have the keep function here it could be a little bit messy so make sure that you know what you're doing that you know that you have everything with that you know aligned with the downbeats that's probably going to come in handy if you have something with a lot of sample material that's panned around you know and spans more than four bars and you have something all the way down to the right at 30 bars or whatever or at the 30 bar mark maybe you want to do that at the end to make sure that everything like conforms to the project tempo and you keep the alignment without having to move things uh, manually one by one so make sure that you understand that and then down here this um this first one i should say adapt project tempo to the region tempo and align to downbeat it's also a pretty good uh, way of making sure that you align stuff uh, and regions all around is kind of a, the inverse of the command that we have been doing. So I'm just going to give a one quick example how to use this adapt project tempo to region tempo. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to uh, take, I'm going to take, let's take the one with the, let's take this guy here because it kind of the faster tempo. I'm going to adapt that project tempo and I'm making sure that I have keep here so nothing adapts, right? Just for demonstration. Boom. It's now 125. And obviously, this guy here went out of sync. I saw this disk because right now I adapted the project to that. So... down here that that's lined up correctly so all I need to do now is let's say okay so I did that and now I want to set this up and I do you know, that region boom and it's all lined up correctly and you can do that for the other two regions as well so you can go back and forth is what I'm trying to say pretty simple I think pretty powerful especially for those that like to do sample beats and work with sample material so to finalize the video, what I'm going to do is explain a little bit about the Smart Tempo project settings. Very simple. When you go here, you either do the same keep it app on automatic for the tempo mode, but then you have this down here with the flex and follow region setting. This is very powerful tool as well that we can use when we're doing a file from scratch. And all I'm going to tell you is that all of this that I did here, I could have done already without having to do the file tempo edits by just making sure that I had this set up as either on or any other of the on and align bars and beats setting. I would suggest you to do the on first and try that first. Like if I were to have this and I'm not gonna like redo it, but if I were to do that and I had the project tempo at Actually, you know what? Let's just let's just do it. Do this right. Uh, let's make this 120 beats per minute. I'm gonna mute all of these guys. I'm gonna bring something completely different. And now you see that I have on here. I don't need to do an adapt here. I'm gonna bring something different. It analyzes the audio, and now. Um, Let's see what that does. So you see that it flexed that to match the tempo of the project. And how do I know that? Because when I go to the file tempo editor down here, it tells me that the 
actual tempo of that file is 88.3. Granted, there's some kind of weird things happening here when it did the analysis. It kind of couldn't find like the downbeat correctly. But the whole point that I'm trying to make is that if you have your smart tempo settings to on, it's going to flex and follow your files and you can keep putting files in here and everything is going to flex and move around and conform to the project tempo that you have. Just notice the snare. And I probably destroyed your ears. I'm sorry. <laughs> And I can keep doing that for other material and just make sure that you also test that out and experiment with that because I think it's also very important to understand, very powerful tool. So anyway, reminder, if you like this video, you find value on it, please comment, like, subscribe to my channel, Chloromo. If you have other questions, about this that you want to make just leave them in the comment section i'll make a video response for you just to make it simpler for everybody to understand as opposed to writing a full comment like i did on friday and if you want to keep up to date with everything else that i'm doing just pay me a visit at chloromoindustries.com i hope to see you around pretty soon i'll see you in the next one guys peace out